Hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm Fatima Kari. I work as an ophthalmologist at uh, the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital. And um, I'm also associate professor at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. So I would like to share my screen now and um, Okay, so um, we're just going to be talking about the improving cataract services issue, which was talking about better access, better outcomes, and better value. I would just like to acknowledge two of my residents who um, I believe thoroughly read the journal and um, came up with a summary of which this is what I have, I am presenting to you. So the focus of the issue is a balanced approach to outcomes and outlay together with strong partnerships to create a cataract service that puts patients at the center and deliver eye health for all. And what, when we talk about partnerships, what are we really talking about? So it's not just about um, the hospital because it's patient centers. It, we need to know what matters to them, ask for their feedback know what they want. And then the community can also be very useful in terms of service delivery and also in identifying cataract patients because they live among themselves, as well as after care following surgery. Then of course the hospital management where the hub of, hub of the service is, increasing the scope of sustainable service provision with a balance between income generation and cost containment. So in, in this issue, we talked about how can we balance the two? We know that we would like to um, increase the services, but it's always at a cost. And then the hospital management is always trying to cut cost or at least contain cost. So we need to know how else we can do the income generation and that gives us a sustainable service. Then of course, um, the eye care personnel is very important to the system the roles, the responsibilities. And then there has to be respect within eye care personnel and team. And there has to be a transparent and fair human resources policy. So the issue talked about this and um, gave examples of how teamwork can actually increase. So these strong partnerships can help to produce a high volume, high quality and affordable cataract surgical service. Um, okay, so uh, we can't really talk about uh, a cataract service, you know, in this day like, without talking about effective cataract surgical coverage, which is the ECSD. It's the new global target um, recommended by the World Health Organization. And it's not only talking about measuring quantity, but also measuring quality. So both are measured. In the previous um, cataract surgical coverage measure, it was just about quantity. How much of um, people that need cataract surgery actually have it compared to those that um, need it? So in terms of um, who are the people that have, how many people have had cataract surgery and how many people actually need it, um, including those that have had it and those that haven't had it, which is the denominator. So this is the new global target. So it's not just about numbers. It also in, increased the, um, it also stated the visual outcome of cataract surgery as a parameter to consider. And here there's a cutoff point of a presenting visual acuity of 612 or better, which is really a high bar. In the previous WHO um, recommendation of what is good outcome is 618 or better. So this is quite a high bar, which means there has to be an improved quality. There has to be increased output. And then of course, equitable access. We have to consider children. How do we, how do children access the service and how do women access, access the service? Um, older adults, even though contract is mostly for adults, but we also need to pay special attention to how older adults access the service. And of course, people with disabilities. 
So I'll just mention a few key highlights um, of how these, was, um, these were discussed in the journal. So there are articles that focused on the patient-centered approach, and we'll see the article that discussed patient feedback and how that feedback was in, in, integrated into the system to improve the service of that hospital. And then the patient reported outcome measures. So we're not always fixated on um, visual outcome 612. You know, what does that mean to patients and how does that affect their um, daily living activities? For example, look at um, the photo I have here, which is um, out of the journal as well. So acknowledgement to the photo, um, the journal for the photos. Um, this is just a lady who has had cataract surgery, not, I guess it's her first day post-op and she's already back to her usual work and she's happy with it. And then there are there is an article that also talked about service operational policies, being friendly to patients to improve access. We have to think about how we can engage patients, how we can make them happy in the environment. So there's a, so there's a journal article that talks about that. Then of course, the focus on patients' needs. Then we have a few articles also that talked about teamwork and efficiency, where we have highly organized and efficient team-based approach. Um, that could be in terms of, um, of efficient oper operationalization of the system. Like what we see here is the two-bedded um, theater. Even if it's one surgeon, the surgeon can swing um, quickly between the two tables, like finish one before the next one is set up, it started on, on the second table and before the um, first table is set up, you know, the surgeon has started on the uh, other table. So it's quite efficient. And then we talk about bulk purchase. This has been, you know, a long-term strategy. You put resources together to buy a lot of um, consumables, for example, to reduce the cost. Quality monitoring and improving the process, shifting. Um, this article talked about shifting from uh, um, biometry, contact by ultrasound biometry to immersion ultrasound biometry, which improved the IO power prediction accuracy. And that just changed the outcome of the cataract surgery in terms of you know, um, surgery-induced refractive errors. Then taking advantage of economies of scale by sharing infrastructure and salary costs between more patients. So this teamwork and these strategies to improve efficiency are all discussed in the journal. And then finally, it's equitable access is also discussed in the journal. We have to think of how we can address the, um, those that, you know, are that have barriers that face specific barriers. Here we have an example of women by enhancing their experience of care, increasing their awareness and reducing their non-medical costs. Because oftentimes when we talk about cataract ser service, um, surgical service, we think of the medical costs, but we do have non-medical costs and uh, largely women are affected. Then increasing demand and uptake I think I was glad to see that a systematic review showed that um, outreach cataract surgical services are really still very much needed. And in some communities, in some countries, that is what will really scale up demand and also uptake. Um, then reducing financial barriers, which is another key component of cataract surgical service. You have to think about multiple sources of funding. So this is it. We talked about all these three important parameters in the journal, the patient approach, the teamwork and increasing efficiency and um, ensuring equitable access. Um, thank you very much. <clears throat> Thanks so much, Elmin. And hi, everyone. Um, hello from Pakistan. I'm Samrana Yasmin. I'm Deputy Technical Director for RI Health and 
Refractive Error Portfolio at Sightsavers, also worked very closely with World Health Organization and IAPB uh, in the field of vision care. Um, so referring back to the issue on community engagement that um, Elmin talked about, in this issue, we explored why engaging with communities in the work that we do is crucial to ensure access to eye care for all. I'm going to share some key learning and messages that emerged from different articles. So as part of this issue, we applied a health system strengthening lens to community engagement and explored what needs to be done to ensure universal eye health coverage with a very specific focus on identifying challenges of reaching the most vulnerable population groups, and then how we can work with communities to find the right solutions. The issue also highlighted why it is important for us to involve the community, not only in the design and planning and implementation processes, but also making sure that they are engaged in monitoring the quality and impact of eye care interventions and then their role in advocacy. That cannot be underestimated. The choices uh, of making sure that we have the right advocacy messages in place and the chances of advocacy success are always high when communities are part of it and they own it. So we all know that health system strengthening lead to equitable access to eye care. And one key message from the issue is improving eye health for all is critical to making progress towards universal health coverage. This would give access to all individual and communities to the health services that they need, where they need them, when they need them, without making sure that, without incurring any financial issues. So for this to happen, integration of eye care in universal health coverage and delivering integrated people-centered eye care for all is central. So making sure that we apply a health system strengthening framework, that's the way we will be able to address the barriers that we face in terms of inclusive service delivery, eye health workforce, data and evidence, governance and quality of care. The need to embrace technology and innovation is also highlighted and you'll find really good examples about it that we can learn from and also integrate into our work. The article on demand side financing mechanism also share really good examples and tools that can help us to increase access while making sure that we are effectively using our resources, improving the efficiency of service provider and empowering communities along the way. Next slide, please. So there is no doubt that meaningful engagement of communities is really important if we want to maximize the impact of our work. And a strong starting point is to better understand what a community needs. And that means including people with disabilities, women and girls, and other vulnerable groups. So active and continuous engagement with communities is going to help us to understand their need so we can plan and deliver eye care services accordingly. And this then is going to have a ripple effect in terms of generating demand and improving uptake of services. And we are gonna hear about it from Suresh uh, fairly shortly. Social behavior change communication has also been identified as a key strategy that support communities to make long-term change in their behavior. And that includes how they look after their eye health and how and when they seek eye care. So we need to factor that into our work and also make sure that we invest in this area properly. And last but not the least, accountability. For us as a sector to be accountable to, the, to our respective communities and then also making sure that we empower communities to hold all eye care stakeholders accountable, including national and local governments. So in summary, community engagement and integrated people-centered eye care has a tremendous potential to ensure equitable, inclusive eye care that meets the need of our communities. Thank you very much. Back to you, Elmin.
And Demisi, I'm just looking at you because, um, you know, the article you wrote for us in the journal on the cataract issue was about um, taking an eye unit and just completely increasing, massively increasing the cataract surgical output. And that had so much to do with community engagement. So where, where do you start in practice, you know, as an eye health practitioner? It just seems like sort of a chicken and egg. You need the community to do the eye care and you need good eye care to get the community. So where's a good place to start? Yeah, thank you, Elmin. Uh, you know, I, I completely agree with what Serana said and phase added, uh, you know, the community context is very important. And it is different with different uh, communities. If you're working in a pastoralist area, or, or in a different area, the culture, the, you know, the way you address the community, the way you reach the community is different. Mm -hmm. From my perspective to your question, uh, you know, I worked there and I was sharing my experience at Sabati Eye Hospital in Western Kenya, where I worked uh, for six years as a hospital director assigned there. Uh, uh, and looking at the potential, the uh, huge uh, catchment area the hospital covers and the need uh, around, uh, what we did was we looked at two approaches. One was uh, institution-based, you know, the service that we provide at the center uh, for those who, who come looking for the service at the center, like any other hospital. Uh, the second approach was also to reach out to the community 50, 60, 100 kilometers away where the services are not there. And we try to address their needs by going uh, out there. So the two approaches are a little bit different. The hospital-based approach worked very well. Uh, first, we worked on ourselves, on the institution, you know, building systems, bringing the capacity, in terms of looking into our equipment, our staff, uh, our working environment, our patient flow, uh, uh, you know, making it, trying to make it patient-centered uh, from the, the moment that patients come into the, uh, you know, the compound uh, uh, to be properly communicating with them, addressing their needs, respectfully uh, you know, managing them and so on. Uh, and improving the efficiency of the system on the ground in, in, in a way like uh, where we even went to the level of probably operating patients who have come from far uh, almost the same day if they are ready and if they're you know, preparing them, counseling them. Uh, because usually we lose patients if we return them back. They, they put a lot of effort to come from 60 kilometers, you know, a blind, bilaterally blind person uh, with the help and probably sometimes they come selling their resources an ox a cow uh, and returning them back uh, is like sending them or condemning them to not to have service or not to come back and so on so we worked strongly in improving the capacity the systems on the ground worked on our staff in in the way they handle our patients more effective efficiently uh, and not giving appointments. You know, sometimes uh, you know, patients coming in the morning, sitting out there, not being attended well. All that uh, you know, brings in a negative impression by the patients and a negative uh, you know, uh, word of mouth to the community and so on. So we improved on that and that improved the institution-based service, both in numbers, in quality, and in outcome as well. The second approach was the, uh, you know, uh, the outreach service that we expanded. And there as well is where, the, especially the community engagement, the community issue comes in. The outreach services usually work strongly if you have people on different communities where you go, uh, people who reach out and who know the community, who know the culture, who know the tradition, who will reach out to them, influence them, uh, that we are coming as a team, there is a service. Uh, there should be also a good organization on the ground in terms of uh, know where you do the consultations, where do you do the surgeries, uh, and, and a very strong, you know, using local uh, radios or the churches, the public gatherings, and so on, so that they reach out to the people so that people are informed. People are informed that there is a good service coming to them. 
so they they benefit from that that is an important component of the outreach service good mobilization uh, sending out good information and then again uh, still the, your your quality of service provision uh, you shouldn't be minimizing it uh, as much as possible uh, uh, the quality or the standard of service that you have been offering at your center you still keep that quality sometimes when you are out of your center uh, there are challenges that will uh, hold you back a little bit and so on but we still try to maintain that quality service and also work with uh, you know schools uh, other centers where the operative environment is also good enough not substandard and so on so uh, it's, it's mobilization it's reaching out and working with people influencing the community on the ground they can be lions clubs they can be community you know organizations women's organizations and so on so we did work with various community level organizations in terms of doing our outreach and reaching out to the needy in the outreach service so the the uh, what we did was a little bit different uh, for both uh, aspects of service delivery Um, and Hannah, <clears throat> I was just looking at you. you, you were involved very much with the community issue and uh, you wrote about the last mile, you know, reaching people at the last mile. Um, and I think that, that probably dovetails quite well with what Demisi was saying that, you know, having to reach, so hospitals and centres need to reach right out into the community. So I just wondered if you have some thoughts and thoughts to share and tips um, and some, you know, approaches or principles on that. I think what... You much of what we did um, has been mentioned, but let me share very practical examples. Uh, a lot of us are in it. We would probably be an ophthalmologist or a nurse at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, I would draw from my own experience of what I had to do in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. One is to take care of, of the team at the base hospital. And one success factor was to have a person responsible for that community engagement. So we had a nurse who knew the culture and everything concerned with the community to lead on that aspect within the hospital base. Mm -hmm. Then the second point was to make ourselves understand what the community is. So at the community level, who does the patient go to? Who do they consult? What are the systems? What are the traditional? So we educated ourselves first to understand mm -hmm. what that's led by this lead person at the hospital. Then we designed a way to contact the community using this person as the lead person. Um, mm -hmm. So in bite-sized, you cannot do the whole country at once. So you would select a geographical area and then use that person to transmit or change or understand what eye health in is with the traditional systems, the women's groups, the community health workers, just shaking hand and making friends with the community first. So they understand us and we understand them. And we made that. Uh, and the third aspect was that whoever was working at the community, we helped them in a bite-sized way. We understood that they would be taking care of 5,000 population area. So the work is not too much for them. And, and then the next level would be 10,000. And whatever they were doing, the integration, is so important that eye health is not seen as an a silo. It is seen as whatever else is going on in the community. And because that person is working in all other areas, the success is that if they're talking about the child, they would mention eye health. If they're measuring blood pressure, they would mention. So integrating into, into whatever they did. Um, so that, that was, so to summarize, have the person at the institution who would be responsible, have a team. That person, as Samrana said, is context familiar, context national, knowledgeable. And then that person would guide the rest of the team at the main hospital 
and then that person would transmit and be a bridge between the institution and the um, and the community. The, when we think of community, most times we think of that last mile, as you say, but the last mile could exist in the prison. The last mile could exist in schools. The last mile could exist in the markets. So that concept of that person who is not being reached is the last mile. And how do you do that? You can integrate eye health into anything they're doing in health, but you can also see them as a resource. So the health system would be a resource. So whatever resource they are using to see the child, resource they're using to see the non-communicable diseases, you would then push in eye health into that. So that you use that resource because in eye health, you may not have the resources, but if you piggyback eye health into them, any other program or any other captive population, we piggyback and, and, and that has to be an objective, a set objective with strategies and plans and people who would be responsible for integrating into those, into those resources. The third resource that is very good is the community development. You know, the, they are responsible say for water or agriculture or nutrition or other non-health government systems. So integrating into that. I cannot overemphasize the point of the people at the third level or the institution, having a team responsible for making this happen, a bridge person that would link the tertiary to the community and a way of measuring that you're actually uh, Absolutely. being successful in, in, in those areas. So apart from measuring the quality and the quantity, let's also have a way within the team of measuring whether we are achieving that last mile, whether we are achieving the integration. So my name is Faith Langat. Um, I work in Tenwick Hospital, Bomet County, as a project manager, uh, coordinating vision impact project in Bomet County. Our role um, is uh, to ensure that we link, uh, we, we are uh, actually like a bridge between the patient and the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. So um, we strengthen the health, the health system. We use the existing health systems that are in place. And we are lucky here in Bomet that um, our health, community health strategy is very bright, vibrant. We have mm -hmm. all the community health volunteers in all the community units. It's well structured, it's well managed. It's well supervised, such that in, if you go to a community unit right now and call for the 10 community health volunteers, they'll all come. Um, so our, our role there is to link that to, the, uh, to eye health. Uh, so uh, for example, um, we, uh, through the Vision Impact Project, we need uh, screeners and we use community health assistance to screen. So our role here is to ensure that the community health assistant gets the best and very high quality training on identification and uh, prevention and referral of eye problems uh, or eye conditions. So we take them through a rigorous uh, three days uh, training on primary eye care and disability inclusive in uh, disability uh, inclusive development uh, training. And uh, we also do a five days training on PIC because this is the system that we use in referral, in, in identification also and in data collection and referral of our, of our patients. So we ensure that they are well trained. We also uh, um, train them to mentor the community health as, uh, volunteers because we don't train the community health volunteers. So we train them so that as they walk with the community health volunteer, he mentors them so that once they leave, then we have a sustainability plan so that the community health volunteers will also be sensitive that we need to refer patients 
who have white spots or patients with allergies or the teary red eyes or children who have um, uh, squints, we need to refer them. So, um, so we ensure that they get good training. We also train uh, OSUP or Orthomic Skills Upgrade course to nurses and clinical officers. This also maintains, uh, this with our staff who will work in the dispensaries and health centers. So we take the services closer home to the people. So we also ensure that they also undergo a three months training here in Tenwek Hospital. And uh, by the time they go back to their facilities, they are able to identify treats and also refer cases to either the secondary facility, which is our county referral hospital, or to Tenwek Hospital. Uh, they also, of course, um, uh, conduct the treatment outreaches mm -hmm. together with uh, staff from the county referral hospital and the tertiary facility Tenwek Hospital. So they also conduct the treatment outreaches. So by providing them that quality training, then in the treatment outreaches, we we don't we minimize the chances of missing out on very important yet critical uh, aspects. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you. I'm so glad you can be with us today as well, Faith. That was great. Um, I think just a very quick question. I'd love you to elaborate on, I mean, you do a huge amount of training and enthusing people in the community to, to, to engage and train. It's a, it must take a huge amount of energy. So how, how do you motivate community members, um, sorry, these different volunteers and, and, you know, role players, as Hannah was talking, these different people who are already engaging with communities. How do you get them enthusiastic about eye health and, and um, you know, achieve what you do please unmute yourself yeah there we go thanks okay so um uh for us uh i health here in bomet county it's like something that is uh new uh we know of course there is high health but to the community volunteers it's something that is relatively uh, programs that have not been done, if I can say so. So uh, people are really still very excited, very enthusiastic mm -hmm. about it. Uh, you teach somebody and already they are saying they, are, they can relate to a person they saw in the community or even their own relatives. So um, we are not having a bit of a challenge uh, getting them interested. Also in the community, people are really interested. They come in very large numbers to the treatment outreaches. And so it's very important that we maintain very high standards of training, both for the, the screeners and also for the healthcare, health, health staff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Faith. Brilliant. I'm going to 